when it comes to alcohol, like one one's too many for me, right. and a thousand's not enough. Was it like that during your career? No, it weren't. This is after my career. This is when nobody's phoning me up to go to the gym anymore. This is when I feel like my life's ending and it's like I've died. Probably realistically, I'd prefer to fight Chris Eubank. Would you? I just don't like him. I did something. Honestly, I, I dislike him more than a mere Khan. You go in against Crawford, I mean, I'll be blunt, Kel, is this levels at this stage in your career? I'm being blunt, right, and you might not like not it. Not levels at all. Because this yeah. is a one-sided fight. You have a little bit of I don't of know if it's one-sided, is it? What do you mean by one? You tell me how you think it's one-sided. This is up front with me, Simon Jordan. I believe there are a lot of vacuous, uninformed, unchallenged opinions out there. I want to get to the bottom line and cut through the nonsense. So with this podcast with William Hill, I'm going to get people with strong views who think they can stand them up to proper scrutiny. There's a good chance I might learn something along the way. And more importantly, so might you. Joining me in today's episode, a boxer from the Steel City who headed stateside to become IBF World Welterweight Champion. A 43-fight career that included stabbings, promoter splits and broken eye sockets before ending in emphatic fashion as he put to bed his infamous long-running rivalry with Amir Khan. The Special K, Kel Brook. Welcome to Up Front. Thank you. Bravo. Nice to see you. Listen, in, in these shows, Kel, what we try to do very quickly is establish the background to fighters because I've always, I'm always fascinated by fighting. My background is obviously is football, but I'm fascinated by fighters because there's a very different mentality and the motivation that creates a fighter. So what's your story? Yeah, mine's, you know, a counsellor there. Pretty naughty, very naughty kid, you know, at school, very hyperactive. Mm -hmm. You know, a non-star, I couldn't sit still. Um, I think what got me into boxing was, like, Bruce Lee, okay. Jim Claude Van Damme, right. you know, Jackie Chan. I was, like, constantly watching their films and I was, like, kung fu and chucking right. punches at Seti. Um, Any sporting background from your family? Not really. Not like my uncles used to box when they were younger. But, you know, just had a few fights and, and fell fell off really. It's, it's only been me, really, what's gone on and done, done what I've done. Right. So, you know, from, from that young age, my dad seen something in me, you know, that I could punch really hard and I were very, you know, um, hyperactive and I just had that twinkle, that twinkle in my eye, he said. And he took me down to... <clears throat> Brendan Ingalls yeah. down at Winkerbag. Not just any gym, but Brendan not Ingalls gym. Yeah. any yeah. gym, yeah. So <clears throat> he took me down to the gym and I remember first walking in and just seeing everyone sparring and sweating and punching bags. And I just, as soon as I walked in, I just knew that. How old were you? I was I nine. Nine? I was nine okay. year old when I, when I first went in. And uh, Princess Ian were there. Mm -hmm. Ryan Rose, Johnny Nelson. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and all these fighters, so... You know, as soon as I walked in, I just knew that this this was for me. No other sports at all? No other sports. I've not been into any other sports, to be fair. Like, never been into football, never liked a little bit of basketball. But no, nothing. It was always, you know, like punching people in the face, basically. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think fuels a fighter in terms of... I would, in an ignorant way, suggest that into going into the hurt business... You've got to come from a position of some form of anger or some form of resentment or some form of desire to get out from underneath. I mean, you talked about being a naughty kid and you've talked about in the background of your life, and I'm skipping forward a little bit, but I'll come back to my point, um, about a lot of the company that you kept and yeah. where they found themselves. So was anger, resentment, desire to get out from underneath part of the fuel? And also, did it... By going into boxing, did it save you from going down a pathway that a lot of your mates went down? 100%. 100%, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think if I wouldn't have found boxing, I'd definitely be, you know, dead or in prison, you know, because, you know, from, from where I'm from, obviously, it's, you know, that's what, you know, you're a product of your own environment. And but are you a follower? C I think that that's, that's, what I, that's what I've seen. That's what, you know, close people around me, what they did. And, you know, it's it's, it's something what you just fall into. But uh, but again, I mean, I, I, I'm posing you a quite pointed question. But are you a follower or are you a leader? Because other people do things. Do you necessarily I, do it I too? I think that I'd be the leader in what, what, what I were doing, yeah. but yeah. You'd cause the most trouble? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. Okay. But I think that I would have gone down the line of, 
you know, being being a bad boy. But there is a unique psyche that you guys have. I've sat here listening to Carl Froch talk to me about the motivations that got him in a ring and what he wanted to do to George Groves and how he overcame his nerves and fear and Johnny Nelson, how he overcame the embarrassment yeah. and Ricky Hatton, how he wanted to produce certain outcomes for himself and Billy Joe Saunders that started from a position of, I am going to be the best in the world. There's no two ways about it. I'm not living in a caravan with a, with a, with a broken window. Was yours along those lines and, and was it fueled by the necessity to get out from underneath? I, I, know, I'm re, I know I'm repackaging the same question, yeah. but I, I want to get some understanding of your psyche. I think I just, <clears throat> you know, with especially the passion I had for boxing, like with anything, playing snooker, like table tennis darts, I'm very competitive. I always right. want to win. Like I'm a bad loser. I, just, I, I need to win. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just like, you know, I, I love my dad, you know, and, He's always said from a very young age that I'd be become world champion. Right. You know. This is Terry, right? Yeah, Terry. Yeah. So, who came into your life when you were one year old? One years old. One years yeah. old. Yeah. And you, you know, consider him to be your father. He's, yeah, my yeah. father. He's, yeah. Me and him have gone through Frank Warren, every different promoters. Yeah. He's always been side, a constant. We've been side yeah. by side through yeah. all my career and all my life outside boxing. So you know, he's like. Would he have not kept you off the? Would he have not kept you on a straight and narrow as well? Yeah. No, he would have, he, and he has done, you know, in my career. He's, he's got me out of some sticky situations. But, um, you know, like, you know, like, I look up to him so much, mm -hmm. you know, and um, from a young age, like I said, he's always said that I'm going to be world champion. Right. And Did you believe that? And I really believe what he did said, you, 100 million Did you believe percent. it because he said it, or did you believe it because you believed it? I believed it because he said it at first initially, right. so, but then, obviously, like, People also I looked up to in the gym, like Naz Ryan, Brendan Ingalls, mm -hmm. you know, saying that, all singing from the same hymn sheet, saying that, you know, I'm going to go down and be one at best what's come out of, you know, Sheffield and and be and go all the way, you know, and I, I started getting older, um, winning, you know, mm -hmm. national championships. And 36, just, 36 um, amateur fights. Yeah. 31 wins, two ABAs, yeah. You've done your research. That's Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. That's so yeah. Brendan Ingle. And lots of lots of guys that sit here. I mean, I remember watching Earl Graham and watching him and always admiring Earl Graham and watching him tragically get beaten in a fight with Julian Jackson that he sh that I thought he was gonna win and obviously Julian Jackson cleaned him out and obviously Brendan Ingle over the years has become very influential and lots of people associate him with Naz, associate him with Johnny Nelson. The influence he had on you. It's unbelievable everything he said, you know, I did, Brendan, he would just He's like a prophet, you know. He's he's like he's done so much for the community, and he's got so much respect, you know. He's a, he's a special, a special, a special man, Brendan. What's he done for the community? You mean taking young Just kids like, like you and giving you an opportunity? Like, yeah, even me, I was naughty at school. The time he's put into me yeah. in the gym, like like he, you know, um, I weren't, I were getting better. I've never been the brightest, but you know, the school grades terrible. You, you and know? me both. But like. <clears throat> I would just, I would, the teacher would coming up to him, you know, getting in touch with Brendan, saying he's doing a lot better at school, and right. you know, because he spent this time with me. And his old man Brendan used to take me after the gym. We used to go to steam and sauna, and he used to just talk to me. They were, they were the same stories, but he used to just spend, yeah, invest time. He used to you. put classical music on, yeah, and uh, drive, drive to steam and sauna, and just talk to me, you know, for hours, and spend a lot, lots of time with me, you know, and. Uh, is, you know, I think without without him, like I said, I don't know what, what you know, if I, I don't know what I would have been doing. I hear that. the same story from all the boys that have worked with him. And, you know, obviously Johnny Nelson talked about the the, the participation in going to local prisons and, and fighting, uh, the fighters fighting with the guys in prisons that were boxers and that wanted to be boxers and going in there with Nazim Hamid and going in there with Herbie Hyde and going in there with Johnny Nelson. Did you get involved in any of that? No, I was, was that I, after? Was no, that, that I was too before your that, time? Before my time, but yeah. I've seen, I've seen that. You know, I think I've seen Johnny Nelson put one at convicts down. He's told me, yeah, <laughs> well, he wasn't supposed to. He was supposed yeah, no, to just drop his hands to. and let him do it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah they were a bit. They were. A, I'd say that I were, I would last uh, their era. You know, I were the youngest uh, of yeah, like them. But there was, there was still like ten years plus on top of me. So I were, I were too young to go to that. You, you become a pro. You sign with Frank which seems to be uh, a lot of young fighters start off with Frank, and we'll get to Frank Warren and your relationship with him. 
Um, it seems to me that it takes a lot of fights to get you into certain spaces and places. And it seems to me that there's an interesting... I mean, I, this might be me overanalyzing, but I'll throw it at you and see what you think. When I looked at your record, 28 fights gets you to Carson Jones, right? And that, to me, and you're going to go, how dare you, but I'm going to say it. That, to me, looks like the first recognisable name of any real merit besides yeah. the British belt that you won against Barry Jones, right? But, but, but on the world stage, right? Mm. And it seems to me the first 16 or 17 fights you have are all six-round or eight-round fights. You have a 50% stoppage record in those fights. Yet when you go to the 12 rounds after that for the next 10 fights, you're knocking everybody out. My point in all that is it seems to me that your career goes in fits and starts in terms of 16 fights seems a lot of fights for you to be fighting at six rounders. You're bang right. You're bang right. So why did that happen? It's probably the way Frank Warren did it. You know, just I was fighting these journeyman for way too long. You know, I wanted to have these tests, but... It just that's how it, I wanted. I wanted the the bigger fights. I didn't want to be fighting these fights. What don't come to win, they come to survive. Yeah. And like you said, the stoppages started coming when I was fighting people winning records. Mm -hmm. bit, you know, the better, better the opponent, the better I am. And, yeah. And and you get the stoppages, the knockouts. What I got. So. But, but why did they take so long? I don't know. I think it maybe stop, stop. Well, whatever happened in my career, like. You know, injury. Like I don't know. It could be anything. Like I might have not bought it for a while, or they might have just filled the show up, or. You know, I ended up just fighting these journeymen way too too long, like you said. I should have been fighting real fights mm. a lot earlier. But that does that sort of flies in the face of, and I'm not and I'm not making an observation, but there's a reputation that goes with Frank Warren about being a being a particularly good matchmaker. Yeah, and that seems to be the polar opposite of it. What, what again? You're there. I, the only way I can understand it because I'm looking at your record again. It's taking him thirty. It takes him 16, 17 fights to get a British title shot, right? He's fighting at six round fights. It takes him 28 fights to get to someone like Carson Jones. And then it takes him 30 fights to get a world title shot. And this seems to me to be an inordinate amount of time with a, with a very talented individual that promoters want to make money from. Mm. So why, Kel? You know, you've know, you got your dad involved in the picture as well. So what, why are you appearing to look look like you're being held back or marginalised when you were talent? It's a very good question. I, I just, you were there, so you can perhaps enlighten us. Yeah, I'm the, I, just, I just fight over in front of me. I wanted the big fights, you know. I wanted to be topping bills, like early early doors. I didn't want to be... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to, it to have gone on as long as it did, like you said. I wanted to be in big fights, and it took me... I could, because we're going back a while, it's think because I've been at this level for quite mm. a while, and that was that long ago. I can't really go back to that, but the fact is, I wanted them big fights. Believe you me, I does it piss you off looking it back? Does on piss it, me yeah. off, yeah, because I wanted the big fights. I didn't want to yeah. be fighting however, however many fights you said before I boxed for British title. I yeah. wanted, I wanted them way, oh, way yeah. before they were me and yeah. I think some at at the time. What were, um, I wanted the big fights, you know, but. I, I just, I, I just, I had to just get in there, a young kid and whoever in front of me, that's what I thought. Because well. it feels like it shapes the perception of you and it shapes other people, because I have a perception of you and that perception manifests itself in a conversation later on when you fight Amir Khan, where I pick Amir Khan to beat you and we'll cover that fight later on. But by the nature of these fights that you're having, I think people like me, as much as my opinion is not particularly important, shaped an opinion of you that was that you're you're not operating at the highest level and that you're not a superstar and it's an interesting one because other people refer to you that at a later stage but i wonder kel if instances in your life that change the direction at 21 years of age you're getting yourself involved in an altercation where you're getting stabbed and those sort of things bring a perspective and a focus on somebody what's going on around you in your life where you as a prize fighter are involved in altercations where, you know, it's not the first time it happens. It happens later on in your career, and we'll touch that. And these might be subjects that irritate you, but they're part of the backstory that go with you, so you're going to have to answer them yeah. or, or bat them away as you see fit. Um, but at 21 years of age, you're with the country's probably leading promoter, Frank Warren. We're debating how long it's taking you to get to fights, but you're getting yourself into scenarios where you're getting stabbed. And it makes me wonder, and there's no criticism implied here about the people in your life, but are you getting 
we all judge often by the people that are around us and often we make decisions that who's around us were you getting the right people around you and the right advice and the right guidance to make sure that all of this opportunity that was inevitably going to come your way wasn't pissed away by getting yourself involved in things that didn't need to, for you to be involved in? Of course I didn't. You know, I was a young kid. I was still... 21's old enough. I don't know. You're still, you're still young and dumb and... I've still got I've I've still got the friends what I went to school with, what are from what are council yeah. estate, you know, and you and you still knock about together and there's there's all good to, uh there's problems where we're going out and thing and things happen from where I'm from that that, that kind of thing can can happen, you know. Mm. But you knowing me, like, you know, I'm not one to cause trouble or to be it's just it just finds you. It just found, it just found me, you know. Mm. I mean, I don't like we are going into it because there's then you have to talk about like the, the person who it, who, sh, who sh, it should have happened to and mm. mentioning names and stuff like that. But no, I don't need to do that. We it. don't need to, you know. It was just like wrong place, wrong time, and you know it, it happened, you know. And there's there's obviously this this things like that. What what I stopped starting your career, you know. There's 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 many things what happen. You just see fighters. Turn you know turn up for a fight, but you don't know what happens in training and what happens you know um, behind closed doors. What's your fixation with Emir Khan? I mean, it seems to be a constant theme, and the the, the allegation is, and I'm sure there's two versions to it, that you don't get included in the Olympics. He does, and then and then of course in future times he tells you about a schools you're in sparring and you've got a different view on it. But you seem to uh, have this. Uh, relationship where you chase Amir Khan for years and years and years. It's, it, it does the fixation start it's, with? It, it's probably how it looks. Two thousand you know, three. Everybody does put. Everyone mentioning my name and his name. You, you know, mention it. You uh, mention it a lot. Yeah, not everyone no, else. But, no, but everyone's mentioning they want to see this fight with me and him. You know, so I'm I'm into a corner where that like I've I've got to mention it back because why can't this fight happen? You know, many years before it it did happen. You know, I'm never being fixated on him or jealous. That whenever, whenever you were calling him out in 2012, whenever he's boxed away, you know, as a Bray, I want him to go out and win. I don't ever want him to lose. Or it's just that the way that out with the with the Olympics and our Frank Warren put him on a pedestal, and I used to be on these shows, same shows, and I'd be at the bottom of the bill, or I'd e I wouldn't even have a I could just be like warming up and be chucked out at any point, or when everyone's left, I'd be the last one on. You know, and I've always, it's always, he's always had that push more than me and the easy road where I've had to get myself <clears throat> up the rankings and do it the hard way, the proper way. Do you think that the Olympics gave him a bit of advantage? Because when you come back from the Olympics, he came back with a silver, not a gold. Ben Whitaker came back with silver, he wanted to throw it in a bin, right? Yeah. Amir Khan came back with a silver and it. was and lauded and applauded. Do you think that's what gave him a kickstart? Because you're both signed for the same promoter at roughly the same time, right? Of course it didn't get him a get him get him that push you know to go out you were a young young guy got a silver and they, they had a rematch frank did that and he ended up beating the guy who beat him in mm. the in the amateurs yeah yeah like, like of course that you you put on that pedestal like billy joe saunders james the girl frankie gavin mm. anthony you know, joshua anthony joshua yeah. you, get, you get that momentum you yeah. get you know you're the you're the flavor do you resent it you know as in did you resent the fact that he was getting no, he, all he, the attention from a promoter that's supposed to be looking after your career and he's getting pushed in certain directions? Does that fuel some of the yeah. um, attitude and outlook that you seem to develop between one another over the I years? I think it probably yeah, has. It has. You know, Frank Warren signed me up and he promised me when he did sign me up that me and him branch off and we would meet a bit like De Gale and George Groves you know that British title level mm. you know instead of it never happening and so it's, it's just it's just gone on and on and on and it's a fight and and just we 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 his comments saying that he, he it's me what didn't want the fight and it, it and he's saying even with a sparring and stuff even after the fight what we just said he said he can't even remember what happened you know mm. I don't know if you've seen that but um it's a fight that should have happened. It's been kept away from the fans for, right. for many years. but well, We had it in the end. We, we had it. And we'll talk about that fight in specifics. You you split from Frank in 2011. Right? From from your side of the equation, yeah. what was behind 
your motivations for splitting with Frank? I think it was at the time I were I were training with Dave Colwell. Right. And I like David's good lad. Dave Colwell mm -hmm. and I think Frank had a bit of a problem because David A started this thing up with Satanta. Okay. Satanta's, the broadcaster, yeah. The broadcaster. Yeah. And I think Frank said to me that, you know, he wanted me to leave Dave. He wanted back, you to leave Dave. Leave Dave and go back with Brendan, you know. And nice. I, I, yeah, and and basically how we, how we start, how we, the, the reason why I left Brendan in the first place is because he said the same thing there. Like, I've got all these promoters, like, and, and Frank was a man, Frank was like the, the, the Eddie Earn, let's say, of, you know, the promoters, you know, back then. At that time. At that time. Would it be a surprise to you that, my understanding of the situation was, is that you wanted to fight Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. And Frank did not feel that at that stage in your development at 2011, what would you have been in 2011? 25? Yeah. Right? And the level that you'd been fighting at, that the fight for you that was right for you, given the fact he's fighting Marquez, he's fighting Bradley, he's fighting uh, Keith Thurman, he's at that level, mm. and you're building up to that level, that he didn't want you to have that fight. Probably it would have been right to do so, yeah. But it, it, it's more into it than you've just said. It but like, that's what he thinks, because I asked him. No, it just to extend contracts, you know how, how, how things can get, how things can get, and it was just like, that was the way of getting out of it, because we're getting promised, it weren't just Manny Pacquiao, there were, there were things, there were fights before, and there were, you know, it were like, I, I, mem I can't remember. What, Philip Cote? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't, there's, there's been like fights and promises, let's say, around them after Philip Cote. There's, there's, it's not just Manny Pacquiao. I know what you're saying. It, but, but do you that, think he was right at that time yeah, to I steer think, you away from fighting yeah, Pacquiao? Manny Pacquiao were like more in his prime there, or a young yeah. young fighter who's not really, yeah. I've not boxed at, at that any, level. anywhere near that yeah. level. So yeah, but but it's not, that's not how it's gone. That's not how it were. You sign um, with, uh, Eddie Hearn, and Eddie at the time um, talks about oozing class and going to be a superstar. What what made you sign with Eddie? What was the motivation to go with Eddie? Because he can sell you a good pitch, you a good woo. What was the closing part of saying Eddie Hearn? He's the one because at the time Matchroom uh, were were coming of age. Yeah, coming. Of, they, were, they didn't have that many fires. They got promised to 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 promote me and to have me at fight and regular and to build me yeah. to build to build me the fire you know it, it doesn't it, get your world title fight for three years you didn't get me a world title fight for three years but mm. yeah so what was the difference between the two camps then so you've got you're coming out of well, I'd, Frank I, I, and you're I, I, going I, into I, Eddie and you've you've, suffered, you've been told by Eddie was it was it was it um, Kel because Eddie said that you're going to be his number one he's going to give you top billing it, top no, it, priority he's going to make you feel a million dollars there were there were many parts, of course, that would have been a part of the reason, but just to be promoted, get me fighting regular in right. Sheffield, build me up. You know, before when I was with Frank Warren, you know, like I weren't really known. Eddie Earn made me a star. You know, he, he you know, he's, we sold arenas out. You know, before that, I'd but I'd, I'd fought with Frank, and you know, the support I weren't I weren't really known. You know, he promoted me. He got he got he got he built me the fighter. And and got me to be to be a superstar. With. Can you see? Can you again? I may I may have I've already asked this question, so apologies if I have, but I don't feel I've got the answer. Can there be any reason in your mind's eye why someone that's as commercially motivated by Frank as Frank Warren would want to almost hide your light under a bushel? Do you understand what I mean by that? Keep you in the background because I don't understand it. Yeah. Do, you don't understand. I don't it. understand. I don't no. understand why 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 he did that or why why he did that. Was it? A, was I don't it... know if he's got because he's got these fighters. I don't know if because Eddie just had me. They were me, Darren Barker, and Froch, and he could and he and he could just concentrate on how to get me out there, promote me in the best way he did. Did you? Did either you or your, your father? And maybe maybe Frank didn't believe in me. Maybe he didn't believe in me. But it was like. Maybe you know do nothing. Did you get that it. impression at all? I did. You know, you I, did. I, I, I did. I, yeah, I didn't feel like there do do definitely weren't that connection. What me and Eddie's got, not, right? Not at all. Did you either your dad pull up Frank and say, 
well, what's going on here? We didn't know any different, you know. We was right. We were, we were young, green, like right. We're not we're learning not, a trade. We're not learning trade. Yeah. You know, we'd yeah. not, we didn't really know. So you signed with Eddie. Did, did he make Carson Jones? He did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And that then accelerates you to a point with two fights later, you fight Sean Porter. Tell us about that experience and that journey. I remember you celebrating in the ring. I remember seeing interviews with you before the fight and you were confident and assured. But the manner in which you, your performance was a professional shutout. I think the scorecards were wrong. I don't think there was one scorecard that should have been drawn, but it, but, yeah. it, but it gave it to him. And that's what you get when you got away fighters, isn't you, sometimes. Tell me about that experience of going in there, beating a, a world champion in his own back garden in America, also without getting perhaps the attention that you should have got. Yeah, it was... Simon, I swear to you that that was the best. That was the best I've, I've ever felt in my entire life. You know, in boxing, in in my life. Yep. You know, because he was like he was being bullied as the next Mike Tyson, this Sean Poor. Yep. Knocking Paul O'Malley and in his fire. Watching mm -hmm. it in Vegas, thinking, I'm fighting this guy mm -hmm. next. You know, and and people and had and people, everyone had me out not to win that fight, mm -hmm. and just. You know, I think that I had like a, a moment in there when I had a moment in there when 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 the fight were over, and I think that that's when. Did you know you'd won? I was just gonna say, you know, like the secret, like law of attraction. It was like all them years. I don't know. It's like all them years. My dad telling me I'd be world champion, and I, and I just knew before this was end, it. This was it. Yeah. And that feeling, you know, going twelve rounds in America. All my family there, my yeah. mum never seen me fight. She come down. Never seen you fight before. She never seen me fight. You know, she she was there and phew, it was just it blew my mind. It blew my mind, obviously, hearing and the new, you know, being being there with the people that love me. Mm -hmm. You know, what's with the ups and downs in boxing eventually getting to to that moment and becoming world champion. But what's the build up like for you? when you're landing in a space where you're fighting for the world title, not the after result, but the build-up and the expectation on you and the pressure that you put on yourself, because this is your moment. This is where the ambition comes to, to meet the opportunity. What's that like? Because people can't relate to someone going in to fight for a world title. It's just like, you know, every every single second of the day, it's on your mind. Yeah. You know, it's the last thing you think about at night. It's the first thing you wake up to in the morning. You from a nervous point of view, from, from a nervous a point of view, point from of view. a nervous point of view, from every point of view, am I good enough? Am I really good enough? Yeah. you know, really, like, because I'm a really good enough. Like, I'm here now. I'm fighting the best in the world. You know, am I really good enough? It, you know, this is what these are all the questions you're asking yourself. You're only human being, and you, you you're away with your own thoughts, and and the pressure just builds every, up. Builds up. You know, how does it, nerves manifest itself for you? Did you become irascible, bad tempered? Or does it make you withdraw? What does it do? F what did it do for you when you're coming into this monumental fight? I just go quiet, you know, really, right. really quiet, and just like just in my own thought, just in my own thoughts. There, as the hours, it's like only way I can describe it probably is like the people who are going to go get killed on death row. You know, oh, like, right, okay, walking like, towards the gallows, walk, yeah, walking, <laughs> walking through to, to yeah, your final yeah, breath. That's lethal what, injection, that's, yeah. yeah, lethal injection. Yeah. That's what that's how it, that's the only way I could describe it. What, right. what they're feeling, all that. Is time, that a feeling of dread then? <laughs> Mate, is it feeling of dread? Like, yeah, it's like you, you, it's like the unknown. It's right. like it's like, like it's no, not fear though, no, is it? You're not frightened of it's going fear, in. It's fear. It's every emotion. It? It's a lot of emotion. It's fear, fear right. of losing. I'm not fear about getting hurt. Fear right. of losing. Right. Not never get back getting it, right. and getting anything like that. It's the fear of losing, it, like, and because it's I want to win so much, and I've lost that many times in my head as well. You mm. know, just like it's just a battle. It's you, just what you've you, you've been role playing this in your mind. I've role played this right. fight in my mind thousands of times. You know, thousands of times. So, and you lost it. I've I've lost it. I've you role played it, it in yeah, your I've, mind I've and envisaged I've, I've losing. Lost, I've lost it in my mind. I've won it. It's like right. You know, I can <clears throat> so many things. Honestly, it's 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 like that. You Who's know? training you at the time, Dave? For the world title, yeah. No, uh, Dominic Ingle. Dominic Ingle, right? Fitch. So you've gone back with the Ingles now. Yeah, yeah. So I've been with with the Ingles m m uh, many years before the right. Sean Porter fight, but <sighs> but obviously, like I've never really boxed in America. Then I'm flying to Las Vegas, yeah, acclimatizing, yeah, 
doing doing two weeks out there and then flying to LA and you know I'm 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 like faced with promoter Oscar De La Roya. I think I'm mm. on the big stage. This yep. is because I've always boxed in Britain. It's yep. like I've I've, arri I've arrived. I'm at, like I'm a good enough. It's and then we're finally here. You know I remember looking at him opposite him. The ref you know there's yep. me, me the referee and Sean Porter and I'm looking thinking. That is the that's the fastest fight I've ever had in my life. Right, because you know? it's gone black and blur. It's, it's just gone like a blur. That but fight. when you're looking across him for the first time, what are you thinking? What's happening in your head? So ears? in my head, I'm thinking this spell's gonna go now, right. and this is it. This this is it, Kel. This is what you've. This is this is what the dream. This is what it's been about since you've been nine year old. This is what everyone's been talking about. This is this is it. This is the world title fight, and in your ear, mm -hmm. you've arrived. Let's see. And I'm going to do everything I have to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Absolutely everything. I'm so focused, so tunneled in, yeah. you know, to to obviously go out and do what I did. Um, when you win, and obviously I saw the euphoria. Were you, did you expect now, this is it. Lights, camera, action. This is it now. I've won the world title. I'm going to get all the opportunities and all the recognition that I deserve. Did you? Did it feel like yeah. this is the beginning of something? This is what I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd keep it safe. Yeah, this is it. This is where big door comes. Yeah, this is where big fight. Keith Thurman. These are all big yeah. fights I'm gonna get. I'm world champion. They all want to fight me now. Yeah, in my head, this is what's gonna be happening. Of course, that's what I, I believe. Yeah. Right. Okay. And did you automatically? Is is there a, is there a switch that goes on in your head? Um, because Barry McGuigan said there was when he became world title champ. When he yeah. won the world title, you feel like you're a world yeah, champion. Now. Yeah, I did. Chris Billum Smith said it the other day. I yeah. feel like a world champ. I'm not. I'm not I, I, I totally get what Barry yeah. McGuigan said there because when I become world champion, I think you, you know that you deserve to be where you yeah. are. It's something like I totally get that. What you've just said. You just, did it change you anyway? As in, as in what? As in becoming big time or getting carried away with yourself no, or no, just I'm, actually. Confirming what you already know, Conf just like yeah, confirming what I already I know. You know what I mean? I just I didn't change as a person. You know, you see some fighters where they become world champion and goes to the red and they start being a completely different person. Mm. But I just I'm I was just me. But I just felt that I belong and and I deserve to be world champion. And I just had a feeling of I walk in like I'm on air. You know, mm. like this like I am. You know, and I thought I'm a good enough. I know that I am. You know what? I now am. Okay, you're now the IBF World Welterweight Champion. You've got, by your own words, the potential keys to the safe, the opportunities, and you get yourself in another situation. And you get yourself in a potentially life-threatening situation. Yeah. Have you done that, Kill? I mean, you're not 21 now. I'm not 21. You're 26, 27 I'm, years I'm of age. 28 years of age. You're now a world champion. You now got profile. You now got all your dreams. What are you doing, getting yourself involved in a fucking fight in Spain or wherever you were? I mean, yeah, in Tenerife. In Tenerife, when my when my daughter and my missus was pregnant, Linda. Yeah. Um. It's just that, like I say, you don't, you don't know what's going through somebody's mind, you know. Like your I, mind. You're the one that's putting yourself in this situation. I'm putting myself in a situation where I'm around drink and drugs. As a professional sportsman, as a world champion, yeah. Why? It's it's just that it's, it's just how it happened, you know. There's obviously with a younger generation, there's there's drink, there's people drinking, and after party, there's, you know, they take drugs. But you're a superstar. I, I'm a superstar. Oh, on the but, cusp of being one, you're a world champion. Everything you've wanted. I'm a world champion. I'm. Uh, I've always been. I'm still that council kid. Mm -hmm. I'm still a council kid. I'm. I'm. St you know. I'm. Not, I'm, I'm a world champion. But that's what I am. Right. I'm just trying to understand what's going on in your head because it's interesting because people don't get to hear what's going on in other people's heads. And I'm not poking at it because I want to make you look small. I'm poking at it to understand why you put yourself in that position. And you say, well, <sighs> you take the boy out of council states, but you never take the council state out of the boy. Is yeah. that what you're saying? I was saying that, you know... Um you start once too like we, we, when it comes to alcohol, like one one's too many for me, right. and a thousand's not enough. Right. You know, I've always I've always had enough, but I'm never satisfied, and that and that's what I've discovered. You know, by going to rehab and, right. and by going to uh, 
Was it like that during your career? No, it weren't. Because you're a professional no, this, sportsman, this you can't, after, can this, you? This is after my career. Yeah. This is when I've hit rock bottom. This is when I've. Uh, this is when. This is when nobody's phoning me up to go to the gym anymore. This is when my pub, like my papers, is over. This is mm. where I feel like my life's ending. And it's like I've died mm. because I've got no fight. That's what my life was. You right. know, when I've come to retire, I'm 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 sat there in my big house and I'm thinking, what do I do I'll now? Do next, yeah. What do I do mm. next? No, I get that. And because it's like, and the eyes, what I've had and stuff in there. The lights go down. The, the lights go down mm. and nobody, nobody, nobody gets, nobody learns you how to deal. And nobody prepares you prepares for it you, you prepare you yeah, how to deal I'm gonna with it. I'm going to cover that part, right? But why do you think it happened? Why do you think someone attacked you? You don't know what goes through people's mind, you know. It's like the person. Envy? With, maybe envy this person's saying that if this situation, like putting, like, this guy's completely off his being being at it for days and you know? I've just come like, I've just won this world title my missus is pregnant I sent her down the road to go to the hotel and I'm having a drink with some old old Irish men who are talking to right. about Brendan Ingle right. and then like there's a Lineker's bar across the road this young woman's come across oh, Lineker mm. Lineker and, uh, and I've just won world title and they said oh Kelly like come across to our pub like have a few drinks with us and da 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 and I like I was in world title, everyone's excited partying. Mm. And then she's like, come back to, to ours, me and my partner, and we're having an after party here. Yeah. And I've had, I've had a few drinks and I've gone back. And like you said, you don't know what's going through someone's mind, you know, like saying. Did you see it coming? Because often you see some of these sort of things coming, don't you? I didn't see this coming, you know, maybe no. intoxication. I, I didn't see this, this coming. I was like, oh, I I've had my leg chopped off. Right. You know, but when he starts saying that he's going to, start talking very weird this person about stabbing and, and shooting and I said anyone can do that they're a coward in my eyes to, anyone can do that I'd, I'd stand and have a fight like and this is it, just pause before before you know it like just as a blink of an eye mm. he's because of these small places in Tenerife you know he's, he's come back and he's, he's grabbed this knife and as fast as that, so he's calling me a coward. Then I'm like, "Whoa, what's what's going on?" Yeah. And he's he's gone down to my leg and at my leg went off, <sighs> just as fast as that. And then he's he's he stood over me, and I'm trying to get out of the, get out of this place. And he and he's completely like lost lost his mind trying to. Do you like, think you lost anything? Do you think you lost anything physically as a result of those injuries? Who knows? You know, as in. Well, you know yourself, don't you? Yeah, I you, think you know that, what levels you operate at. Well, I. I I got myself right. I got myself right. I could fight again. Yeah, you know. You fight nine months later, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to tell. You know, I felt that I were back. I felt right. that I were back. You know. Talk, talk to me, Kel, about the next array of fights, because I'm trying to. I'm struggling to, to understand the direction that you're going. And I know you're going to say to me mandatories, right? But <laughs> I'm looking at Jojo Dan. I'm looking at. Um, Kevin Bizier, I'm looking at Frankie Gavin, right? With no disrespect to these guys, right? And then I'm looking at Danny Garcia, and I'm looking at Keith Thurman, and I'm looking at some of the other characters that are out and about there, Marquez. I'm yeah. looking at who's else out there, and I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking, why are you in these sort of peripheral fights that aren't going to get you huge amounts of money, aren't going to get you huge amount of exposure. Well, and yet you... you're in with Eddie Hearn. There's no criticism of Eddie uh, here, by the way, before everyone gets all tied up in knots about yeah. me criticising him. Well, let me just tell you something. Do you think that I want the big... I'm a young 20... Like, do you think I want the multi-million pound fights with these Danny Garcia's and Thurman's? Yeah. Like, Because you, got... you had Devin Alexander, didn't yeah, you? But you got, got injured re... twice. Got to remember at the time, you know, politics, Al heyman has got all these fighters. Right. They all just get filtered and fight each other. But you Khan's know... over there, your little nemesis. I know, but he's I'm... fighting Peterson. He's fighting Marcus Madeira. He's fighting Garcia. He's fighting all these names in America. Is it because he went to America? I'm not comparing and contrasting. I'm just saying that you're a world it, title holder, and with respect to Frankie Gavin, with respect to Jojo Dan, and I, and I, and I think there's a difference between Jojo Dan and Frankie Gavin and Kevin Bizier. Yeah. But these are not the fights that not. you would have wanted. Do you are think they? that I wanted them fights? Did, do you think for a minute I wanted them fights? I've just I've just become I'm I'm world champion. Do you think I want to fight? They might be my managers, but who the fuck's heard of them? Yeah. No one's heard of them. I've got to fight them or get belt up. Yeah. I have to fight these fighters, you know. What, free nondescript managers? Like, or get belt up. That, right. That's how the IBF work, you know. So it's like, I didn't want to fight them. When I saw you fight Golovkin, do you know what I felt for you? Honestly. <sighs> Tell me. I felt fucking sorry for you. Yeah. Do you know what I thought? I thought, they can't, they can't, they can't sell him. 
They can't sell him. They can't get him the fights that he that perhaps he should be getting. So they've had to stick him in with Golovkin and watch him get his face fucking punched in. That doesn't mean you weren't game. It doesn't mean you didn't put up a fight because you did. Yeah. But what do you think when I say that to you? Go. Well, do you think like going? Oh, who the fuck looking back, or... he's an absolute monster. But do you know, like someone who's unbeaten, someone's unbeaten, and, and really believes that the, the like you can beat any any man at middleweight, yeah. even at middleweight. Fourteen pounds. I just thought you always think. You know, I'm a boxing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep out away. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm better. I'm better. You know, but as we know, it didn't go down like that. But it done you, didn't it? It damaged you. It damaged me. It created a different division. It damaged me. Circumstances and it, for and you. It, it did actually change me that because when I admit when he broke my eye, yeah. You know, and and the and the surgeon said, you know, it started to come to me where I think this is just a sport. You know, I'm, I've been looking at it different. You know, I could have lost, I could have lost my eye. He said, mm -hmm. one more big shot and you could have been blind. And that hit home, you know, right. and, and that hit home big time. And he actually come through me in the fight after when I boxed uh, Errol Spence. Spence and did you think, did you, did you believe in yourself? I mean, you're, you are a world champion in your own right. You're undefeated. You, you know, we're talking about these other fighters. They still got to be beaten, right? So I'm not diminishing those fighters, but they weren't going to get you paid the way that the keys to the castle that you thought you were going to get, right? Did you think in this Golovkin fight? Did you go into it thinking, same as anything else? I don't give a fuck who you are, and I don't give a monkey's that I'm going up two weight classes. I, I, I'm going to win this fight, and you're just another opposition in front of me, and I'm going to do to you what I did to Sean Porter. Yeah. Well. Well. That were the first, or does Ganovkin no, as the reputation that goes before him that, that play were, in your mind? That was the first time that it did. In my, in my, right. That was the first time that I remember being in the hotel room and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm fighting Golovkin now, tonight. Right. And the doubt, I started to doubt myself. I honestly did. Did I, you? I did. I thought, on the know, night of the fight? I remember on the night of the fight with me and my nutritionist at the time, Greg Marriott, you know, and I, to, I told him, you know, I thought, I just said that, I didn't say I'm gonna lose. I said, "You think I can? F I can win this fight, can't I? I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win this right. fight." Right. So that's straight away saying it out loud. You know, that's right. negative. Is yeah. Uh, that's doubting yourself. That's doubting myself because, like, on the weeks coming up, you just see all I've, all I've been able, to, all I've seen is Golovkin knocking everyone out, mm -hmm. middleweights, and and then I'm thinking, starting on me that I'm, you know, I'm, fight, task, I'm yeah. fighting him yeah. in a few hours. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and like. And I think a lot's in the mind, you know. Like I said, if you really believe, you know, law of attraction. If you re if if you really believe something, like a, like I know, we're gonna win world title. Like, you know, with everything in me, I went out and did it. You know, and I start when 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 you're negative, that were that were first time I'd lo I'd lost. So you lose. This is the first loss you've had. All right. What's the psychological effect on you? Does it get diminished? Does, does the psychological damage that losing your first fight has as a fighter get reduced by the fact, well, hang on, I went up two weight classes? Or is there a big impact? No. Irrespective. It first was, loss. It was still a big impact, but right. the second loss, when we get to that, that were, mm. that were the real loss for me. Right. I think but because I probably, it wasn't as bad because you were a unified middleweight beast or middleweight yeah. wouldn't even fight, and I think that took a little bit off it. But I still lost, and I was still absolutely devastated. But what really destroyed me were with the with the with the Errol Spence loss. Mm. The damage that Golovkin does to you. Did you know the moment it it hit you that that that, that was a real problem for you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I just I just knew something terrible had happened. Right. I well, like a crab claw being crushed. Like I could I, I could I could hear it. I could feel it. Right. You know the adrenaline's running. You, I could actually feel. Like I knew something wasn't right. Different level of pain. It weren't really so much the pain. It were it were. It was what it did to me, like like the, my vision. Right. Yeah, and I knew something had see it, like. This, this this completely discombobulates you and takes yeah. you out of control of you. you yeah. Does it frighten? Is it frightening? It's frightening. Of course, it's frightening when you've got someone who's. We've got that kind of power. We've got that yeah. kind of power coming to, and you've got more coming to it. A, a wounded animal, you know. Yeah. You, you know, it's 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 scary. This is the first fight that you lose. Psychologically, it has an impact, if I'm right, but it's not a, that destructive an impact. You've lost your first fight. You don't know what losing looks like. You now do, but you've also lost to a weight to a guy that's dominating a weight class which is two levels above yours. You now end up with Errol Spence. 
if you hadn't fought Golovkin, do you think you would have been in a better position to have beaten Spence? One hundred percent. Right. So. So the damage but, that the Golovkin fight did to you was quite significant, wasn't it? It, were, it yeah. were, but on top of that, don't forget I didn't have to make one four seven. I had to make middleweight. Yeah. To start with. So. So you've got to get me down again. So so so, after that fight, I went middleweight. And then yeah. on top of that fight, I've had, I've had, I didn't actually, had have, broken, I've yeah. had my eyes broken. Then I've gone, I've gone away. I've gone away with my family. I'm eating, I'm eating on top of a, a stone yeah. above my weight to start with. And it, that's, with that fight it seemed to have come, like, even with mandatory, it were like, give the title up. Eddie said to me, you can give the title up. To what end? No. And then. What would that do for you? Like because like because of the time I had to make this fight and the weight and the condition I were in. So you'd vacate. This would have this would have give this not well, because to, because you've got giving me giving me the, the options what. But what, what different what, kinds of options? What, yeah, what, what, your reaction would have been no. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely. I've not. earned this title. I've earned this. I'm going to defend it, and this you've is a big to, fight. You got to kill me, yeah. Yeah. To take this. Yeah. And it's and it's in your hometown. And I put yeah, and I yeah. put all this weight on, and then I'm dragging all this weight back off me. The training camp were terrible. I wanted to be away from, you know, from Sheffield and just be completely and utterly focused on this fight. And were you away from Sheffield? No, you know. I, so if you wanted no, to be away no, from Sheffield, no, why weren't because you? Because it was like having problems with, having problems with my trainer, you know, getting right. getting things, you know, he, he had personal problems and, you know. It was so just, everything is wrong. It, everything was just wrong, wrong for that yeah. fight. Everything was wrong, but, you know, I got... I got to the fight, we were getting close to the fight, me had my dad and everyone, you know, saying, you need to pull out of this fight. Right. You need to pull out, but you know, the fighter and s selling all these tickets and training and in my own mind, I'm thinking, I've got a I'm fight. gonna make this way, I'm gonna, f I've got a fight, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a fighter, you know, but looking back, that would be one fight that I wish that I would have um, pulled out of and extended the, the, you know, the fight. Yeah. You just mentioned a moment ago, about the effect that this fight has on you. You can live with the Golovkin loss. Yeah. This one kicks you right up the arse. Because this is the belt. This is at I my suspect weight you probably class. know that you weren't in the best condition going into this fight, so you're probably cross with yourself as well. Yeah. I'm I'm just correct me, I'm speaking no, no. for you, but you can correct that me any time. That's what was correct. Um does this start a spiral for you to some extent? I mean you lose you lose this title. Does this is this the starting of certain thought processes in your head about where you are and what you're doing in your life or is it just a fight that you've that you're very unhappy that you've lost it creates a negative reaction in you but you're able to come back from you know i didn't know i did question myself after that fight am i, am I really good enough um you know what started to think shall i retire you know i i, I hit a really low point in my life you know my career you know what you did 29 20 29 30 around that age yeah yeah Still very young. Then. I just thought, you know, um, losing him in my weight category, you know, against 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 him, you know, it's obviously it's another thing to swallow in when you've mm. when you believe in yourself and you you're a world champion, you know, you hit you hit the my lo lowest part of my career at that time. You come back, you get yourself together. And you're now landing eventually, relatively shortly afterwards, against Terrace Crawford. And now, what we know about Crawford and and Errol Spence, and the perception of two of them being two of the greatest pound for pounds at their time. Crawford's obviously just done a number on Spence recently. Yeah. Um, and we'd seen Crawford come over here, and no one had quite really understood. And Ricky Burns had got done up like a kipper by by um, Crawford, and everyone's seen this. You go in against Crawford. Now, this is a much more difficult fight you for you mm. is this i mean i'll be blunt Kel, is this levels you're in this fight at this stage in your career uh, you, I've, there's no yeah. right i'm being blunt right and you might not like not it levels at all because yeah. it, this is a this yeah. is a one-sided fight you have a little bit I don't of success. Know if it's one-sided is it what do you mean by one you tell me how you think it's one-sided um i, I thought well, so you look what if so every round you think it's one-sided and what? Well, there weren't that many rounds were there there weren't that many rounds but mm. what well, i was totally out class from round one I think there was a level in that fight. Now, I'm not suggesting that Kel Brook in his pomp couldn't be at that level. I'm suggesting Kel Brook that's gotten beaten up by Gennady Golovkin, that's got damage done to him by Earl Spence, is not the Kel Brook that beat Sean Porter. And that puts Kel Brook into, into difficulty when you're fighting 
someone of the calibre of Terence Crawford. You had to be on your A game. I didn't have to be on my A game. But they were, they were Will you my... tell me about the fight then? As opposed to my, my well, little it, analysis, which you know better than me because you were yeah. there. Yeah, I were there, definitely there. We're in lockdown, aren't we? We're in lockdown. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a trainer. Well, you know, I'd, I'd never trained me before who spoke very little English. Well, that was a useful decision, and, wasn't it? Well, I know. Did you make that choice for them? Well, it was were, it were lockdown, not like I had to... Dominic wouldn't go, on, go away to Spain because he didn't know right. if we were going to get back. And we all know how bad lockdown were, we're not... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I had to just deal with the situation, what, what I could, how I could, you know. Um, of course, as we know now, he's, he's, we'd have to put... Terence Crawford down is is one of the best fighters yep. at this current in current yep. state of boxing. You know, I never did. I, I felt like he were he were like a uh, he were like a surgeon. I don't like you know, don't for, don't forget when you're dealing with fighters, what what a champions like. Mm -hmm. It's it's not nice to hear you say that you think his levels above like levels like I'm, I'm at my fight. level, not like, per se. But I'm just saying to you, but he he were unbelievable. Yep. Fighter, as we know, you know, I felt yep. that I, you know, I'd, but he's that good. He, he's southpaw, he's orthodox. He caught me with a shot, it's never happened in my career. You know, I got caught with a shot. He, he you know, if I had a be better preparation, if I were my, were my original trainer, if I do, do, done things differently, I do it. We don't know. I've, I'm not listen, I'm always going to say that you know, I can beat any fighter, yeah, but this guy, this guy's beast, a yeah. very special fighter. Yeah, he, he, he walked out first round in. As a southpaw, and he's an awful lot. He can switch it. He's like Ronnie O'Sullivan in snooker. He's, he's the bollocks. Yeah. You know, and this is the war against, you know. Yeah. And, and so we're not really out, but then we're splitting hairs, aren't we? Because you're saying he's a very special fighter. He's a very special fighter. No, 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 no. I'm, a very I'm special saying it's level. Fighter. You are. I didn't say you weren't. Right. And But you're bristling at me suggesting that there's levels. And I'm just curious why you'd bristle because by your own admission, maybe, maybe it's because yeah. you have the right to say it and I don't. Yeah. It's, right? it's just, it's just steering it like it's. Because I'm a winner, and yep. just hearing someone saying that like beneath me, it's just hard to hear. But like, I, I didn't say that. I know that. I'm, I know you didn't. Didn't but, say that. But just like, just, I like, didn't mean your that. levels, like you know. In that like, fight, I don't like. Yeah. That well, we, we, I don't look, like to hear it. I couldn't do what you do, so it doesn't. I promise you, mate. It doesn't come from a position of disrespect. It just comes from a blunt assessment yeah. that you can have a different but view on, and we can all disagree. Not, you know what? You know what went on. I like. It. Okay, we land in the Amir Khan space. Um. After years of calling him out, or let's say other people suggesting it, right? But I've heard you calling him out as well, right? This fight gets made, and it catches the public's imagination. Um, you talked about not particularly resenting other fighters, or not being resentful, or not having a particular distaste or dislike for anybody that you've been in a ring for. This dynamic is slightly different, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Tell me about it. When people say I hate him, or I just, I just hated, I hated that he he kept because it was just bugging me wherever I went. People always brought it up. That was just the thing to say when you're fighting me. I can't. You know, I was sick of it. I was sick of that. I couldn't provide that fight for him, and it, and it wasn't my fault. It were it were. Um, Do you mere, think he ducked you? I think he hundred percent don't man. Why yeah. do you think he ducked? Because I just think that it's different when you when you lose to like Canelo or abroad to to like or Manny Pacquiao. That you know you can you can say, well, at least you know I've, mm. I've like but if you lose you, a domestic fight to one of your own. when you domestic fight you know that there's a lot more pressure, a lot more pressure and and and. It's hard to deal with, and I think that I don't think he's scared. He's not scared of me, but he's scared. He's scared of that. That that right. He's scared of that. Right. Yeah. And and some of the things that were said over the years about what he did and didn't do to you at the early stages of when you met one another in gyms, and how he schooled you, that just fueled it a little bit and irritated you. It just fueled it. You know, it's just it were a big it were a big build up for many years, mm -hmm. many years, and. Um, and we did, but we eventually did get there. And what I loved about the fight, and like 
everyone's got their own opinion like mm -hmm. even you i did yeah and like, i was wrong you were you were wrong I was. you know and like and I, you I, told me and I, and I like it because that was a fight where people really did have his 50 50. they did like you were on his side like yeah. it, it, it was it was like that yeah. and that's what made the fight so interesting mm -hmm. appealing for for the fans even did, though i knew yeah you do <laughs> yeah i knew yeah you knew okay knew. all right um because i remember saying to you 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 talked to me on the radio and i said because most people are cowards they don't say what they really think and when they got the guy that's in front of them that they go oh yeah no i think it'd be you mate and then behind closed yeah. doors no it's not going to be him i said to you i think he beats you i think speed and you said yeah you don't know what you're talking about timing beats speed and it did and it did but do you know when i knew that i was absolutely wrong when you think share for me when i saw you on the on the on the stand and I saw you at the, because, at the, at the weigh-in, and I saw Khan, who looked like he'd shit himself, with due respect to him, yeah? It, and there was a completely, <laughs> he did, didn't want to be on stage, didn't look like comfortable. And I remember turning around, I, thought, who, I think it was Adam Catcher or someone like that, going, okay, now I'll put a few quid on Khan, and I wish I hadn't now. Yeah. Because it just looked to me like there were two different animals on that stage. That One that was there to do business, and one that was there because he well, felt he had to be. I'd never, I'd never trained for a fight like I did for that, because... Why? Because you I, don't, well I know, but I don't. I don't. The, I think it was because I know that I've boxed all these world. I boxed Sean Porter and yeah. up, but I will be remembered for that fight. I mean, I can't. And I, he, he he's got to live for the rest of his life knowing that he, he got beat off me. Right. And that will. I I, I just. I just wanted to put one hundred percent in that fight. Right. So if if I did come up short. I did absolutely. There's not there's be anything I can question. No excuses. There's no excuses. Yeah. You know, the, he's a better, better man. But I knew that I were a better fighter. I knew that timing beats speed. All I needed to do is put put that that effort in, which I did. And, and yeah. you can see in the condition I were in. I seriously, I took that training camp. No, I saw you. I and, saw. I saw you was, on the stage. It, it was the one sided beat down. You it know, was the one sided beat because yeah. that, that that that's yeah. what that's what I visioned. Yeah. Do you regret that fight didn't happen in your prime? Both of, you. of course I did, you know, yeah. because we were both world champions at the same time. You know, it would have been a much bigger fight. It would have been the same outcome. Hmm. <laughs> it would have been the same outcome. Probably even quicker. Yeah, okay. Changing gloves in rings. And well, I was going to ask you Changing that. gloves in rings. Because I was When have you seen that? Changing oh, no, no, no. gloves. Well, Knocking it, on my door at three or four yeah, in the morning. Because wasn't, wasn't it about the fact you had feather gloves, which were puncher's gloves, and he didn't like that? Yeah, but the, yeah. like... Robert Smith signed him off. It were perfect, yeah, know. you know. It's, you know the story. Yeah, they did everything. Did you think there was a, there was a, the perception that he wasn't going to come out of the dressing room? That's what they were saying to me. Yeah. Like Robert Smith and they're all panicking. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just going with going with it, you know. But I, my dad said, "Listen, you've got to change them gloves. We're not going to get paid. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to get paid unless you change them." Your view of him lessened by the you've mentioned it, um, and I would have mentioned it anyway. Um, it's disappointing to see him tested positive. Yeah, and of course it the is. amount of time it took for that to be discovered. Yeah, that, that's that. a different discussion as well. Yeah, but does it lessen your view of him? No, you know I've got respect for him. Yeah, Khan. Listen, I'll be honest. You know, but you what? must have a strong view about drugs in sport Absolutely. and all that's going on with it. So how can it not lessen? No, I'm just saying. Oh, are you on about this? I thought you said. How do I feel with it with Amir Khan? Nah. Yeah, well, no, no. no. But I'm not about well, Amir Khan is now in the category. Yeah. Sorry, Amir, yeah. in the category of being categorised as a drugs cheat. Yeah. And we've got all this stuff going on inside the sport. We've had all the conversations about who's doing what, when, and why. We've got people sitting there regularly and saying that 60% of the sport's juicing, and all this sort of stuff. The sport's eating itself in problems with this scenario. Someone's eventually going to get hurt from this. Yeah. It must. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but no, it no. Must, you must look at it and go, well, that's no. not admirable, is it? That, well, it's it's still, even having that in failing, but I honestly truly believe in my heart that he did have no idea that that, that were in his system. The reason, really? The reason being is because I can remember the beginning of his training, like, the start a negotiation for this, that he made it, like, made for it testing clear, for testing. Yeah, I, I know, made, yeah, I remember. We got that. tested that many times and never, nothing, ever, nothing ever come back. And I think that with this particular drug, with what I know about it, that you need to have it, you need to have it over a, a long period of time to get the, like, the benefit or whatever. Um, and, it, and he'd be, we were both getting tested so regular up to the fight, you know, and, the, and this were like, this were like, the, 
uh, on the fight, mm. like on the fight night. So it, 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 so don't it doesn't make have sense. any metabolic don't, benefit. It doesn't have any benefit to me. Mm. So that that's the, that's the reason why. Right. I just well, think, I think you're very generous in that respect. That's been just being honest. Yeah, well, I could, well, fair I could. enough to you. you. You know, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you about the episode with cocaine. I've got to ask you. The first question is not about the manner in which you did it. Who the fuck have you got around you? That you're, you're you're in a situation where people are taking camera films. I mean, I'm, I'm not condoning the fact you did it in the first place, but I'm not here to judge you about recreational drugs. You're yeah. a big boy. You take your own responsibilities, right? But who have you got around you? This seems to be a common theme that you're in situations at 21, well, at 28, at 36 that people aren't around you, that people aren't around you looking out for you and looking after you and saying, "Whoa, Kel." You 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 you're doing a line of coke over there, and someone's filming you. I know. You know, obviously, it's best thing to have happened to me. You know what happened after, when I've got myself right. But you know, um, having someone who I've been very close with for a long time, and it, and it was his brother. You know, who filmed him, you? Who filmed me? Without mentioning. Oh, lovely. You know, uh, coming bringing him to my. To my own, thinking, you know, to just me and him, like, and, and he's, and he, he just shows you, you know, you think, you know, got love for you, and, and they clearly aren't, you know, and he's, and he's uh, gone out and filmed me, you know, when I've, when I'm at the lowest part of my life, when I'm just in s such a bad, dark place, yeah. and, and I'm, and he's done that to me. And, and sell it to vapors. Do, do, do people can people not see, besides your immediate family, that will struggle with what you're dealing with as well because they're on the receiving end of perhaps some of the way you feel about the world. But do you not? Do you could not people not around you? Important people, people that have been in your life, people that have been um, influential in your life. Could they not see the challenges that are coming your way, or, or you just won't listen? We, Probably, probably a mixture of both. A like, of. Probably a mixture of both. I won't listen because it's a feeling, you know. It's a feeling I have, and you know, um, sometimes with young, young, young kids, when when the, when the older generation are talking to them, because they know better. Yeah. Because yeah, in one ear and out other, you know. Yeah. You know, so it was just it were, it's been a part of my life, but you know, I'm not. I'm not. How are you now? I'm a shit. How are you now? I mean, I'm, I'm 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 very good now. I'm in a yep. good place. I'm I'm happy in sobriety and right. I feel, you know I feel I feel so. I have a lot better relationship with my family, my children. Yep. You know because the important things in life. The important things in life. We've got total. I'm I'm utterly connected. You mm -hmm. know, and 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 I'm 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 in a very good place. So, with that in mind, <laughs> what's going on with you? I'm hearing, well, Connor Ben. Chris Eubank Jr. Well, I'm getting a bit bored, aren't I? Right, okay. I'm getting a bit bored and right. I'm thinking, you know, it's, you know, I didn't know what it would like to retire, but listen, it's, I just look at these fighters now and I just think, you know, I can beat these guys. And like, just that, I love a challenge. I love, mm -hmm. I love competition. I love getting myself in good shape. I love, I love I love the diet, I love the hard training, I love the hard spas. I love I love it when people like yourself don't think I can win a fight and I go out. Well I was wrong. Right. Well I was wrong. that's what and I mean. I'm quite I, happy to cough to it. Well I, I well, love could, that. Not, could I? Yeah, yeah. I love that. You right. know, I love it and yeah. I just love that. I love that challenge. I right. love that challenge and you know, I'm 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 retired. But you know, I I could I could come back for them kind of fights. If you're if you're confronted, I mean, you you say you're retired, you say you're together now, which I'm pleased to hear, um, and you you know you're coping with the reality of no longer being a fighter, and being able to balance it off against the challenges that you have when fighting finishes. But you leave it with a but, which is, if these fights could be made, Kelbrook is a name, yeah. Kelbrook sells. Kelbrook, Kelbrook and Khan filled an auditorium. Yeah. I would imagine that Kelbrook and Chris Eubank Jr. would fill an auditorium. Don't know what the weight class, though. 160? Whatever. Whatever. Or, or Connor Bennett, your old welterweight. 
if one of these fights, if the fights were in the mix, which one would you would like? Which one would you like to have? And realistically speaking, is it something that you think? I'd probably realistically, I'd prefer to fight Chris Eubank. Would you? Just, just because it's easier than the wait for you. No, it's not easier the wait. It's just that I just don't like him. He's, Do you not? He's so arrogant, and he's he's he, he'd be. I'd I'd get through a training camp a lot easier because I'd be fueled to just, you know. As in, uh, do you think he's arrogant? Because I, no, I, I, I think he's arrogant. What's he arrogant about? It's, just, it's something about him what goes through me. Just the way he is, it's fucking. Is it because he's just he just grinds it, man? So bad, he's just. I don't know if it's because he's he's smarter than me. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's I don't know. He, he, he can sell himself very good. He, he does he, do that. Fair he, enough. He, he's got something like, but I just don't like the kid. There's something. Honestly, I, I dislike him more than Amir Khan. Really? I swear to you. There's okay. something about the kid, honestly. Does it crack. start from him saying it's, you quit? It's so or is arrogant. it just because you don't like no, the fact of what he says and what he just, does? It's just he do, what he does and how he is. And, uh, he just, it's just something about him. How he comes across is just horrible. Do you think that fight can be made? Yeah. You do? I think it could be made, you know. I'm willing to fight, you know. Let's... Let's just see what what can come from it. You've heard it here. Well, I'd like to see it. And I'd like to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to be honest, Kel, I'd like to see you beat him up as well. Well, I'm happy about that. But listen, anyway, Kel, I've really enjoyed speaking to you. You've been very upfront, and thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you, Sam. Well done, mate. Upfront with me, Simon Jordan, is brought to you by William Hill. Future episodes can be found on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly.